Steph and I'm back for another video since we've been in quarantine now for several weeks. No, oh, we've been in quarantine now for two months, over two months. So I figured that we've all had our ups and downs on this crazy roller coaster of quarantine and sometimes during the downs we need some books to kind of help pick us back up. I'm calling this list books to read when you're feeling down. I'm gonna start off with a very humorous author and that is Jen Toronto. Now I honestly can recommend any of her stories and she just has a new one coming out in May 2020 so if you're interested in that check that out. But I'm gonna kind of throw back to one of her older series called The Ladies of Distinction. This takes place in New York I think in the early 1900s and the reason I'm starting off this list with her books is that in this book in particular is that this story has very funny characters that end up in outrageous and humorous situations. They end up in these ridiculous debacles and then they kind of have to figure out a way out of them and it's it's very funny, it's very silly, and it's very lighthearted. So it has a romantic theme with the story but that's not the only thing that the story has. There are other things, other ladies with ambitions and goals. So the Ladies of Distinction starts off with Eliza who is a British lady who ends up in New York. Something has happened to her fortune and she's trying to see if she can figure out what happened so that that money that belongs to her family can be returned to her family. These stories are fun. They're lighthearted. They make me like chuckle, like physically out loud. I chuckle. There's something funny and outrageous for all of her characters to experience. I've read all of her books and I have enjoyed all of them so I definitely can highly recommend them. Moving on to another great character with witty dialogue and clever characters and that is Sarah Eden. And I know I've talked about Sarah Eden before but she has several series. She has the Jonquil Brothers series. She has the Lancaster Family series. She has some westerns, which are also very good. All of them deal with hope. And I thought it's so relevant for right now. Not exclusively, like in a naive sense. Not a cheesy kind of hope. It's, it's not a forced kind of hope. These characters choose to look at their very trying circumstances, very realistic challenges, and hold their chin up high and keep stepping forward, keep doing their best. So that's the aspect of her stories, which I really love to read, and I find that it's super relevant for right now. Up next is Shadows Over London series by Rosianna M. White. The first one is A Name Unknown, and this story is about Ros Rosalind? Rosemary. I think it's Rosemary. Rosemary. So Rosemary, she lives in London, and she is recruited to spy on a certain gentleman who is kind of a recluse in the country. This is right at the start of World War I and his family has English heritage and German heritage and they're concerned about his German heritage where they're not sure where alliances are, if his alliance is to the English crown or if he is perhaps secretly a spy for Germany. That is basically her mission to go undercover and investigate, see, see what he's up to. A Name Unknown has characters that both have secrets that they hold from each other. It's told from two points of view, from Rosemary's point of view, and it's from the gentleman's point of view, Peter. So we have that element going on. We have a little bit of a romance going on. And the other thing I love about this book, it is the first book I ever read, and I've read a lot of romance books, that has a main character with a stutter. It just kind of gives you a glimpse into the frustrations that come along with being a stutterer, and the misconceptions of others. We see others kind of misjudging and misunderstanding or misinterpreting Peter Sutter and what that means for him socially as well as how that affects his character development throughout the story. So another one to kind of give you something, a story to have fun getting lost into. It's not super heavy on the war, it's kind of just investigative and secretive and it gets you caught up in the story. And I thought it was a really fun read and the trilogy that this is the start of is also very very well written and it is the starting point for Rosianna M. White's second series which is currently being written. I think she just published the second one in February of 2020 that's called The Code Breakers. And that also is about World War One, but more so from the office standpoint of protecting England for like national security during World War One, basically. 
So, highly recommend them all. They're a fantastic series, great to be getting caught up in, and very well written. Next, we have a nonfiction book called Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. I listened to the audiobook version of this book. It really encourages the listener or the reader to kind of pursue their creative path, whether that means occupationally or recreationally. All about just kind of embracing who you are, where your creativity lies, whether it be in baking or journaling or planning out some sort of, you know, scavenger hunt, whatever the case may be. It's about embracing who you are, who you were made to be, and how you can contribute to the world with those skills and not to second guess yourself to the point of holding yourself back from contributing to the world in whatever capacity that you are interested and able to do so. So I thought that was really fun. It was really inspiring. It's read by the author. You can hear the intonation in the way she reads this. This comes from the heart for her and she hopes to reach the heart of her listeners. And I thought that was a really enjoyable way to kind of listen to this book and see how it relates to all of us as individuals as well. Next on this list is the first of another series, but it can be read as a standalone. Mm, but would you want to read it as a standalone? I wouldn't. So take it for what it is. Um, but the selection, though this is currently being talked about more because it has been recently announced that Netflix is going to be adapting this movie. So now will be a great time to kind of get ahead of the game and read it before it comes out on Netflix. This book is a YA romance slash dystopian kind of romance. I kind of like to sum this up as, to people who haven't read it, as The Hunger Games meets like The Bachelor. That sounds about right. There's politics, this is future America in general. The, the America is not what it is today. And it is set in America. We have our main character who is part of the selection unwillingly and she gets taken to the castle. There's one prince and this prince is coming of age to marry, become the next king, and he's looking for a future queen. So all of these different elements come into play and I think it's a fun story. It's a fast read and it just makes you excited to just want to stay in this world. I love that you get sucked into these stories and you don't want to put them down and you want to see what happens next and it is exciting to be along for this this journey that the characters go on. So if you haven't read that one, are interested, or haven't read it in a while, I just did a reread of all five back to back a few months ago, and I was hoping that I would still love it as much as I did like years ago when I read them sporadically as they came out. I really enjoyed it, and it was just fun to be a part of that world. It was fun to read them all back to back, and it was a neat way to just kind of have a break from life and be a part of this fun world. And I think that's really relevant for right now too. So if you're interested, definitely check that out. Next up, we have one of the more lighthearted and funny audiobooks I've listened to lately. This is William Shakespeare's A New Hope. So this is a adaptation of the original Star Wars film, A New Hope. So good. But beyond that, it is written in a Shakespearean style. The author's note at the end of the story explains kind of why the author associated each character with different elements of Shakespeare's writing and the different kind of rhythms that are associated with words and why he used different patterns for different characters. And it made sense when I listened to it, even though I didn't fully feel informed about the technical side of Shakespeare prior to listening to this. I thought it worked really well. I've also since listened to other Shakespeare audiobooks and sometimes I find it difficult without looking at the text to see what is happening, who is speaking, who is exiting. And the thing I like about this story is they're so entertaining. They're not very long. I think they're like two and a half, three hours at most, which is pretty short for an audiobook. But we have familiar music because it's copyrighted by Disney. So Disney owns the music for the Star Wars films now and they can use the themes when we have like Vader or if we have Luke or Leia or Yoda, whoever. We have these characters. We have pretty much all the same lines as the film, but we get to see how it would come across in a Shakespearean way. It's very dramatic. I love it. Um, it's so funny. And I was constantly laughing out loud. So 
I think this is very, very great for a general audience. Anybody who's even slightly interested in Star Wars can appreciate this. It tells us who's on stage. It makes it clear if somebody's facial expression is supposed to change because they're basically reading this story like it's a play because that's what Shakespeare wrote. So we hear the stage directions written out loud and we hear this narrative, which is so familiar, come to life in a completely new way. And I've listened since to the original trilogy, episodes four, five, and six, in these audiobooks because that's what my library had and I've loved them all and I really really want to dive into more of them hopefully very soon so if you're looking for a fun audiobook something different something light something funny and you are even slightly interested in Star Wars you should check this out next up is a classic book that I actually suggested for my book club this month because I just thought it's so great, so uplifting. Not only is it timeless, but it's also something full of hope and rising above trying circumstances. And that is Anne of Green Gables. So you may or may not be familiar with one of the film adaptations or the current Netflix adaptation of Anne of Green Gables. This is written by Lucy Maud Montgomery, who is a Canadian author. Anne of Green Gables was actually her debut novel, and it has spurred so much interest in her writings that she continued to write profusely during her lifetime. She wrote a lot of short stories. She had other heroines and other stories that she wrote, but Anna Green Gables is what she's most known for. And this is the story of Anne Shirley, who is a... Anne Shirley, who is an orphan, who ends up at the home of Green Gables, where a brother and sister live together, owning the farm and taking care of the farm. They are looking for an orphan who can come live with them, be a part of their lives, as well as help them with the farm. And they are very, very shocked when the boy that they requested ends up being a girl. And all the drama and the imagination and the creativity that Aunt Shirley has and how that develops the story, molds the characters' lives, and how her life at school, her social life, she tends to butt heads. She's very obstinate and very, very stubborn when she believes she's in the right. We see Anne during this book over a span of like, I want to say two or three years. So we see a lot of growth in her as a character. This can be read as a standalone. I highly recommend if you have any interest in reading something uplifting, something timeless and classic. Perhaps you've only seen like the Megan Follows version, which was done I think in the 80s. Um, it's so good and there's so much in this book that just can't fit into a film version. There's so many little stories. The graphic novel is also amazing, but there's so many little intricacies to this story that are so well done that I highly recommend this story. If you've never read it, check it out. Next is a graphic novel. Book Love by Debbie Tung is about this author's experiences as a book lover. And even if you can't relate to every single page, most of us who are readers can absolutely relate to many, many of them. And I just loved reading through this book. I'm sure you can get it as an ebook if you can't get a physical copy of the book right now during quarantine. But this book, I, I gave it five stars. It was so sweet, so relatable, and it was so fun to read. There were so many times I'm like, yup, been there, done that, been there, felt that. Oh, I, I like to walk through the library and just be around all the books too. Or I get that way and I get stiff from sitting in one position for too long. And then I'm like feeling like an old lady. Whatever the case may be, there's so many different like relatable little scenarios that she describes about her experience in bookstores or her experience being around libraries. And it was just fun to read. It was light and fun. And if you're a book lover, you'll definitely appreciate it. Last but not least... I highly recommend that you read an old favorite. So if you have a book that you have loved and haven't dived into in a while, check it out. Whenever I'm in a reading rut or whenever I'm having a really tough day, if I open up a book that I know I've loved, even if I haven't read it a while, it just brings back all the nostalgia, all the feelings that I, I felt when I originally read this story just come rushing back. The joy that I felt from experiencing this story for the first time as well as the joy just in finding a story that brings... Come here. Hi, I see you. This is Chewbacca, and he likes to bark at the neighbor's dogs. Not that you could tell. Any book that you love to read, that transports you back into that book world that you love so much, is totally worth getting out. 
even if it's an ebook version from your local library. Whatever the case may be, if you are in a reading slump or if you just are feeling down, get a book that bring, puts you in a different mindset. You know, it's so rewarding to revisit a book world that you love. It uplifts your spirit. It gives you such a sense of accomplishment. It gives you a sense of completion and resolution to a story that you find enjoyable and fulfilling to read and that world to be a part of again. So definitely check that out and I hope you enjoyed this list. I hope that you find a book that brings you some sunshine, especially if you're going through a rough time right now. You're not the only one and we are all in this together. Even if we are apart, we are in this together. So thanks so much for watching this video. Have a great day and we will see you soon.